Howdy, howdy, everyone. Chris here. Welcome to Garage Noise. On the last episode, we went ahead and straightened a dent in this Acura MDX. I shared with you how to pull the metal out. We used the G90E. We dollied and shaped that metal, and then we got it filled, primed, and ready for paint. Today, we'll finish up this repair, and if you don't have a paint booth and are painting your vehicle at home, I'm going to give you some practical steps that you can take in order to give yourself the best opportunity for a clean paint job. Some things you might not have thought about. The first step in getting a clean paint job at home is your air supply. This is very important. You want to have dry, clean air before you start painting. Even a little bit of moisture is going to show up in your clear coat as dust. Now, this is my system here. It's a very basic system. I have a filter that I purchased off Amazon. It separates oil and moisture. And it carries some desiccant beads that I just switch out before each paint job. And that seems to do very well. You can also add a water trap that goes on the end of your gun. Whatever you do, you wanna make sure you have clean, dry air. Step number two is gonna be to blow out and wash your entire vehicle. And I would recommend doing this before you start sanding or any type of repair. So any trim that you haven't removed, like your weather belts or your bumper or your door handles, you wanna blow those out really well. Any gaps, door gaps, cause those could hold dirt and contaminants that will blow out into your paint job. Once you feel like it's blown out really well, go ahead and wash it with some soap and water and get it nice and clean and ready for the next step. Before we get to the rest of the steps, we need to prep out this lift gate for paint. So I'm just gonna mask off this glass. It's a fixed component and we don't wanna remove it, but we don't wanna scratch it when we do our preparation on this panel. Let's start off by applying a guide coat. This is a black powdered guide coat. We just spread it on there. And what this is going to do is it's going to show us any high or low areas that we have when we start blocking. Now I'm going to use some 320 grit sandpaper on a small block, and I'm going to block this panel in an X pattern or a crosshatch pattern. That's a technique used to get a panel perfectly straight. Now I'm doing this in sections. So I'm doing the bottom section, and then I'm going to go up and do the top section because I want to maintain that body line throughout this lift gate. Now I'm going to take a gray scotch bright and a piece of 320 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to soften up this body line just a little bit. I don't want it to be really sharp. I want it to look like OEM. I use some fishing line to saw through the glue on the emblem. So we'll remove the emblem and then we'll clean this with some spray away glass cleaner. And then what I'll do is I'll use an eraser wheel to remove that glue residue left behind by the emblem. Now we'll prep out the rest of this lift gate. And for that, I'm going to use a gray scotch bright. This is equivalent to a six or 800 grit scratch. Now remember, we're just putting color over the primered area and we're blending into the rest of the lift gate. But this unsanded clear needs to be prepped out so we can clear over this entire panel and it will adhere properly. So we're going to go ahead and scuff it up with this gray scotch bright, get all the cracks and crevices, the edges underneath that glass, get it sanded really well. Now I'm gonna do a quick spray out on a spray out card to make sure the color matches. And then we'll go ahead and mask up the rest of this vehicle. I'm gonna mask up the edges and do the perimeter first, and then we'll cover the entire vehicle in plastic. I don't wanna create a hard edge of clear on this top panel. So I'm gonna use a technique where you fold over a piece of tape and then you lay it on there and that creates a soft edge of clear. It allows a little clear to blow over that edge so you don't have a hard edge of clear. So what you do is you take this piece of tape and then you just fold it over, fold over the top, and then you run your finger down it and fold it all the way down. Now you have half of this tape is sticky and half is not. Now what I'll do is I'll lay this tape right on that edge and that'll help create a soft edge of clear. After taping off the perimeter, that leads us to the next step of getting a clean paint job, and that is to wet down the floor. Now, I like to pull out the vehicle. I don't sweep the floor because I don't want to stir up any dust. What I'll do is I'll wet it down, and then I use my broom to push out any dust, and that leaves the floor wet, keeps that dust down. I think it helps to eliminate stirring up any dust. The next step is tight masking. You want to make sure all your masking is nice and tight. You pull your plastic tight when you cover the vehicle or any gaps that you're covering up or taping off. You want to make sure there's no possibility that air can get in those gaps and blow any dust out. Now, remember, we blew out all those gaps so that we would eliminate dust. And now we're going to make sure we tap, tape them off really well so we're not blowing any air into those gaps. Now, I also like to pull the plastic tight 
I twist it at the end, each end, and then tape it down so it keeps it nice and tight as possible. I'm using treated automotive masking plastic. This is a plastic that's treated on one side, so when you apply your paint, it's not going to blow off or flake into your paint job. So I've covered this entire vehicle with plastic, and then I'm cutting out the areas that we're painting, and I'm going to go around the perimeter of that plastic and tape it down to the vehicle, make it nice and tight so we don't have any overspray on the vehicle or any air blowing any dust out. We're almost ready to paint, and the next step is to wash it with wax and grease remover. This is going to remove any contaminants on that panel that are going to cause problems in your paint job. Now we're gonna apply some 2K sealer over this primer, and this leads us to our next step, which is to strain your sealer, your paint, and your clear coat. You never know what's gonna come off your can into that uh, mixture, so you wanna make sure you strain it and make sure it's clean, because that can come out of your gun and into your paint job. After we seal it and allow it to flash off for 10 minutes, we're gonna go ahead and apply our clear base coat. And if you haven't seen my video on how to use a wet bed or a clear base coat, you can check it out. I'll leave a link at the end. But again, this needs to be strained. This leads me to our next step is using a tack cloth. Now you didn't see me do it, but I tacked this off before I sprayed my sealer. And you wanna make sure you tack it off before you start spraying. This is gonna eliminate any dust or particles that have landed on the panel. The next step I wanna mention, and you wanna do this before you start painting, is to blow yourself off, make sure you're clean, wear a paint suit, and that's gonna eliminate dust coming from you into your paint job. In my experience, the three main ways you're gonna get trash in your paint job is from your air supply, it's from the vehicle, or it's from your person. So make sure those things are taken care of. Now here I'm tacking it off after we put our first coat. So I've checked it over, made sure it's clean. I'm gonna tack it off and we're gonna put another coat of the clear base on it. The next step I wanna mention, and it's something that I don't typically do, but it could help you out in eliminating dust, is use of a static eliminator. They make static guns that neutralize static from your panel. Now those can be quite expensive, but they also have a static eliminator that's a wipe on. And that might be something you could use um, I would specially recommend it on a plastic bumper. Plastic tends to attract static and dust more so than a typical steel panel. The next step that's gonna help you eliminate trash in your paint job is to paint your parts vertically. So if you have the option and you have your car tore apart, if you can paint the hood vertically, you're gonna get less trash in your paint job. For obvious reasons, if it's flat, trash is gonna land on that possibly and get in your clear coat. I do it sometimes, not all the time, but on certain large hoods, I'll try and paint those parts vertically if I can. We are just about ready to apply clear coat on this lift gate. I'm gonna go ahead and apply my last coat of base. And I wanna mention something to you. After you apply your last coat of base, what you think is your last coat, I want you to look over that panel. And if there's any dirt trapped in that base coat, you can go ahead and sand that out lightly. I like to use 1,000 or 2,000 grit sandpaper and just sand over that lightly, knock it down, knock it flat, and then put one extra coat of base on it to cover those scratches. That's going to help eliminate dust in your clear coat and in your paint job and give you a cleaner looking job. Now we've applied our last coat of base coat. It's nice and smooth. I've went ahead and let this cure completely. And now I'm looking it over for any imperfections, any dust, and I'm gonna tack it off before we start spraying our clear coat. So I'm spraying the first coat of clear coat. And here's a tip for you guys spraying in your garage. You don't have to have your gun wide open on the volume and wide open on the air pressure or 30 PSI on your air press pressure. If you wanna eliminate that overspray, you can dial your volume down a little bit and dial your air pressure down a little bit. You just wanna make sure that the gun is atomizing that clear coat well enough that you get a nice flat finish. Because I'm spraying with my gun around two turns out on the volume, I can turn my air pressure down to about 22 PSI. So you can see there's a lot less air pre a lot less overspray than there would be if I was using 30 and you can still get a good finish with that. 
Hey, do me a favor. If there's anything I missed in this video, if you have any tips or tricks to getting a good clean paint job, leave those tips down in the comments below. I hope you found this video helpful. I appreciate each and every one of you watching. And if you want to help support the channel, all you have to do is like this video and consider subscribing. If you want to learn more about paint and body repair, click on this video now. I appreciate each and every one of you watching, and we'll see you next time on Garage Noise.